Okay, it is a big week for MMA fans all around the world. UFC 300, we are here today to rank the fights um, and talk about, you know, whether this card lives up to expectations um, and, you know, by looking at the individual fights, because I think that is kind of the thing they are selling this fight on rather than one big fight, it is the quality of the card from top to bottom. So we're going to decide which fights stand out the most and which maybe don't uh, and don't necessarily feel UFC 300 worthy. Uh, so we've gathered the, the gang together today. I've got my man Jake joining me after a, uh, a little name drop on the crack podcast so if you're here from there welcome uh go on. my man steve here like an Ilya dragonov call up we are ready to go uh i'm sure i was eligible say, for the draft let's go i was gonna say i'm sure you know both steve and jake are both catching up on some sleep after wrestlemania but steve i know that you will literally stay up to watch anything so uh maybe maybe you don't need the sleep recovery like i do because jesus monday i was i am i am very very tired don't you worry (laughs) and we of course the main man his bags under my eyes i'm not gonna like cm punk jesus (laughs) we got the main man corley who i believe uh hasn't watched the ufc in a in a good few weeks but he's been saving up that energy for this card uh (laughs) How how excited are you for for this card, mate? Because uh, oh. it, it takes a lot to get you to stay up to watch a card from from top to bottom. I am ecstatic. All right, well, we'll, uh, we'll get into it. Um, so- <laughs> I'm so I'm so convinced by that. I've never seen him as happy. Uh, no, I, I am actually really excited. I am really excited. Um, you'll find out, won't you? You'll find out. So. We've got a tier list already made up for these fights um, with You're five good. categories. Uh, first of all, I didn't make the tier list. This was already on tiermaker.com, so you can literally just search for this like I did. Um, I appreciate that when I was trying to make my own one, finding graphics that they've made for all of the fights is impossible, and this person clearly had the same issue because Jalen Turner and Hanato Moicano over here uh, in the, on the right look like uh, they're in a different promotion or something, um, but I assure you, it is just a regular UFC fight. Um, but yeah, th- 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 I thought, I thought, oh, there'll be, there'll be one place at least that put out graphics for each one of these fights, right? Cause they're all pretty big fights to some degree. Nope. So I had a crazy <laughs> like collage of a tier list and I was like, nope, we're not doing that. Mm-hmm. So I'll use somebody else's. Um, so five categories here. I'll break down the categories really quick. At the bottom, we have got UFC Apex. I feel like I don't need to explain, uh, why we have put that into the bad category. Uh, that is the kind of fight that. You know, even if it was on at regular UK time, you wouldn't really be that bothered. And uh, fight night, a, a decent fight, you wouldn't expect it to be super high up, you wouldn't expect it to get a ton of hype, maybe. Um, main event, something on a fight night headliner. I, I struggled between um, fight night headliner and a pay per view. Like, is there much of a distinction there? However, I think if you look at some of the main events we've had lately, some of these Apex main events, like a rematch between Brendan Allen and Chris Curtis get on, you know, the main card of a big pay-per-view or at least, you know, a big, when I say pay-per-view, I'm, I'm, I don't just mean, you know, uh, a not so great pay-per-view. I feel like, you know, it has to have that certain amount of prestige, right? And then of course, UFC 300, something that feels deserving of this kind of event, something that fits the hype. Um, seen as in, I want to test how excited Corley actually is after that opening statement i'm gonna i'm gonna go i'm gonna go to corley to pick the first fight for us to talk about which one uh which one do you feel strongly about on the strong card? strongly i actually am very looking forward to no don't shoot me down kayla harrison and holly home now That's not what i had really i had big i had big worries will she make bantam weight but I'm sure Dana released something saying she's done practice cuts or something to 135 and she's passed them. So he clearly had them worries and boxed them off. So I will I will join him on that, basically. But yeah, I think it's going to be really good. If Kayla Harrison can take it to the ground and use her elbows, she is going to make an absolute mess of Holly Holm. But counteraction, bit of um, Reb- Reb- Red Bull culture clash there, sound clash, whatever it's bloody called. Um, I think Holly Holm could light her up on the feet if we get world-class strike and that holly home can do um but yeah i'm quite looking forward to it 
I'm quite looking forward to it. I want to see how Kayla does on the big stage, man. It's a bit different from PFL in it, where you are the you are the face of it, you are the the big promotional push, and she's not now. She's she's got to make a name in the UFC. So um, I'm quite excited to see what happens with that. It's a bit more at play than just a fight. So yeah. From from that initial statement, where would you rank Ooh. this? And then we'll uh, we'll discuss it and see if see if we all agree <laughs> with you. I've said them all really all that about it. I would say it's either a fight night or a main event. Let's be real about it though. Do you know what I mean? Maybe a main event. Interesting. I'd like to say a main event. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I think I, I can I think I can live with that. I think if that was if that was announced as a as a fight night main event, I think I could but yeah, I I you know, yeah. It's I been think, a lot worse. I think it could also be a featured fight or an opening main card fight on a pre- on a pay per view. I think it could be both. Yeah. No, yeah, I I would I would agree with that as well, Steve. Actually, yeah, honestly, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I, I could I see that on a. I think on a card with maybe one title fight, that honestly could end up being a fucking call main event or yes, a, to be fair, or a featured fight. You know? To be fair, any card that's not three hundred, that's that's on the main card of a of a big card, no yeah. problem. But I don't yeah, really so want I, it to be at the same time. I'm, I'm, no. <laughs> no. Mm. Yeah, it's reason, it's, it's would, honestly for that reason I would say move it up. Yeah. So interestingly, I am I am going to move it up because I think general consensus. Uh, interestingly, I would have put it top tier, which. I know is like I, I'm not expecting this to be an incredible fight, right? I, like I'm not saying this is 300 worthy. We'll look back at this and go, "Wow, that really defined the card." But mm. I think if you look at like the biggest UFC debuts we've had in ages, like I know that there are maybe other fighters that you go, "I can't wait to see how this person does in the UFC." Whereas I feel like a lot of people expect Kayla to do well as long as she makes the weight okay. There isn't that kind of uh that big question mark hanging over just how good is she i think a lot of people know that she's pretty good but i don't know if there's ever been a ufc debut at least for a long time where someone's come in and with one win could get a title shot i know that michael chandler stopped dan hooker but you know dan hooker wasn't a former champion in the division like Mm. whilst it whilst that the reason that i would i would concede pay-per-view I, I struggle to get excited about a Holly home fight. Um, it is Kayla that is putting it to me in that like mm-hmm. top tier. It, it's her debut and the fact she's fighting a former champion um, that that I think makes it you know deserving of a of a stage this big. But I I do agree with you guys that you know if this was like on an international fight week, you know when they tend to do, you know they'll have like three big fights at the top of the card, maybe two title fights, and then another big fight like a Diaz or somebody like that. I feel like that could fill that spot as well. Like I think that this would feature on any pay per view card pretty high up. Yeah, absolutely. When you look at guys like Michael Chandler, as you mentioned, MVP as well, making their debuts in mm. big pay per view spotlights, she's no less of a star than those guys. I feel, um, maybe slightly, maybe slightly with MVP, especially over here. But um, I don't think she's really any less of a star. And they debuted in big spotlights. I think Holly Holm historically always been in big spots more than i think a lot of fans would like so yeah that's definitely a pay-per-view fight yeah yeah and it's it's a case where even if you know none of us really think the fight is going to be you know fucking blowing the roof off the arena or anything it's an important fight it has a lot of high stakes if holly home wins they'll give her another title shot and if if kayla harrison wins they'll they'll definitely have her fighting for the title so yeah it's not like you know, in terms of the fight quality itself, I'd place it a bit lower, but it's ramifications yeah. and, you know, there's a bit of hype around it. So, yeah, I, I think that would be uh, a pay-per-view feature on, on any other card. Is it the is it the one fight on this card that I feel like guarantees a title shot for the winner? Like, if Kayla Harrison wins this, or maybe they'll have Pennington and, and uh, Pena already booked, so she'll have to wait. But, like, even... Even Gaethje and Holloway, I'm like, well, you've got Charles and Armand on this card. Yeah. You've got Poirier talking about title shot. Maybe Rakic, but you've also got Ankalaev in light heavyweight. Like, I feel like whoever wins this, admittedly, like I said, they've been waiting for Pena. 
that will probably be next. But this feels like a guarantee. This feels like a golden ticket to me. Whoever wins this, signed, sealed, delivered is getting that title shot. Yeah, Rakic was the other one I was yeah. thinking, but yeah, certainly with this one. It's, it is. Yeah, I, mean, I don't, I don't think it's like, there's really an opinion, but there's there's no guarantees when it comes to the fucking light heavyweight title picture. Like Ankalaev has been promised a title shot for like two years now. And hmm. yeah, and, and obviously that that plays into the main event as well, right? If Jamal Hill yeah. does what I don't think any of us think he's going to do, if he does that, what happens then? Fuck knows. <laughs> I don't I don't I, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> Next one. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Steve, uh, which which fight do you want to which fight do you want to talk about? Hmm. Hmm. I wasn't prepared for this. Um, I will talk about the guy just over my shoulder. That is Cody Garbrandt and Davis and Figueredo. Mm. I mean, admittedly, not it's I mean, it's a rough fight for Cody. Let's have it right. You know. It's not going to be a great one for him, likely, I would say. But it's just a banger fight. And to have this as the opener of the entire card, I mean, that's what Dana said, right? Dana said he wants the fans in there from the first fight. And this fight is going to do that, I feel. Even in a Vegas card where, like, that's not really normal, right? I think this this fight is the one to do that. I think it's going to be a fire fight for however, however long it lasts. And, and I'm excited about it, even, you know being a Cody Garbrandt fan. Yeah. Uh, of the initial statement, where are you feeling the uh, the placement? I am leaning towards main event. Like, this would be like a really good Fight Night main event. Ooh. Possibly. I, I'm going to... I'm going to say higher. I'm going to say pay-per-view. I think that is a quality fight on a pay-per-view main card. And... I think it comes down to Figueredo because like he's been in a lot of really high profile pay-per-view slots, whether he's, you know, the main event or the co-main event. I know his last fight was like fucking on the main card of a fight night. But I think that's just, you know, there was already a lot of talent on that card anyway. I think if that was anyone else, he'd be the main event. But I think Figueredo is a he's a he's a pay-per-view talent. And even Cody, Cody. Even in 2024, I'm still here repping Cody Garbrandt. So Cody Garbrandt's a popular guy, you know. I yeah. think, yeah. And he hasn't Put it been all on the way to He hasn't been on pay per views, but like you know, look at the opponents he's fought in his last two compared to Davidson Figueredo. Like yeah. that is that is pay per view written all over it. I think at least, um, like 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 Holly said, there, there this this yeah, could go say, into 300. Also- yeah, yeah, it could. It really this could. This is a I, really I would, fucking good fight. I would put it at the top. If that was on any other card, I'd be like, "That's a fucking good fight." Because you know, Cody, if he starts getting into deep water, he just swings and just goes in. And that's what we love. And Figueredo is just a maniac, and I just love the fight. It's a really good fight. That it's a really good fight. Yeah, I think my one argument against it being the top top tier was like would i rather see figueredo in a like top bantamweight matchup right like would i would that be better but i think one of the things that maybe does put it into that top top tier is if it was figueredo versus a top bantamweight you're looking at pay-per-view at least but the fact yeah, that it's yeah. the opening fight of the night because he isn't taking yeah. on a top five bantamweight contender, you would imagine if he was, it would be higher up the card. Because it's Cody Garbrandt and it's the first fight of the night, I feel like it has to go UFC 300. Like, when else do you get a fight that good okay. as the opening fight of the night? Never. Literally yeah. never. Yeah. Um, Two former champions. Right. Well, of course. If this fight, if they were like, if they were building 300 from scratch right now and that fight was on the main card, I don't think anyone would complain because that fight is awesome. No, like, it's, it's, it's a it's a guaranteed finish. I'm shocked it's the opening. When we actually saw the final card listing, I was actually shocked that it was the first fight. I still I thought like yeah maybe first section of the card. We're well, not the first fight, so um, gassed for it. So buzzing for that. Yeah, that is a good one. Uh, Jake, pick a fight. I'm going to go with the obvious one out of the way that has to go in 300, uh, Gaethje versus Holloway. If, if there was ever a fight that has belonged on UFC 300, it's 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 this one. This could easily main event a pay-per-view. 
with or without the BMF title fight, I actually was advocating for this to be the main event at 300 for a while when we when we didn't have a main event because I I'd be more than happy with this. Um, yeah, anything below pay per view would be ridiculous. Um, I think 300 suits it, suits it perfectly. Yeah, yeah, I think you can put this one in 300 now, Kyle. Mm, yeah, my only question is, uh, is it? This is so tough because they are literally you know nearly the opposite ends of the card. Is it better than Figueredo and Garbrandt? Yes. Yeah. I feel yes. like it's tough, right? Because we, we said about it being Garbrandt and, uh, and Figueredo being UFC 300 worthy because it's the opening fight of the night. And this is one of the three title fights, right? So it's like it's hard to compare them. But I, I agree that, it, yeah, it is, there isn't an argument for it not being better. I mean, we're not really doing like actual previews on this podcast, but how competitive do you think this fight is? So competitive. I had a very, I had a very, um, when it first got announced, I was a bit like, oh no, I was thinking of Max Holloway's brain. But as I've watched, you know, freshened my UFC memory up a bit, as we say, uh, nah, I'm all for it, man. I'm all for it. I think Max Holloway's a stud, man. He's going to, he's going to blitz it. Gage is going to bring it. Well, what's not to love? What is not to love about it? It's a yeah, shame I, I thought it was... title that it's not the main event. I feel like if that was for a title, that would be the main event. Interim, fucking whatever you want. It's it's a shame it's for that title, man, because that should be the main event. I agree with what you said before, G. It's a belter. Yeah. I I think I, I a couple of months ago when I got announced, I was a bit skeptical. Like obviously awesome fight, but I thought Gaethje was gonna was gonna beat him pretty pretty handily, but Max looks fucking legit going up to 155 he you know he's he's fucking he's maximum holloway now um <laughs> i think he could, i think he could really he could really bring the fight to gaichi uh i'd still pick gaichi at the minute just because of the power discrepancy but i think holloway has a has a serious chance at, at, at winning and if he if he has a bit more pop behind his punches we've seen gaichi go down before i don't think like a a flash knockout for holloway is, is out of the question and that's why i love this fight I don't, I, I, I don't think it's it's as competitive as as you two, uh, but I still think I don't think it's going to be, you know, I don't think it's going to be Gaethje Ferguson, right? Like I, I think it's going to be, it's going to be competitive because Max Holloway is competitive even when he got battered by Alexander Volkanovsky in that third fight. It was still, you know, uh, a competitive fight at points. Like I think Max Holloway will be competitive with anyone, but I just don't think maybe the, like in terms of the actual. Like scoring, I don't think it will be too competitive. I can just see Gatefi winning round by landing more powerful shots. So, but I'm still, I'm still really excited for it. And and if I if I felt like Max would was going to be more competitive than I currently do, I would only be more excited for it. So it's only I, you know I'm going to watch fight week and watch the press conference and see Max Holloway and be like, all right, let's go. And going to get more excited from there. So good stuff. Um, all right, let me let me pick one. Um, I'm gonna try not to just pick the best ones right at the start, um, because then I feel like this podcast is gonna start with us being like, "Yeah, this card's actually really good," and then the, the, us being like, "Yeah, it's it's a good card." Um, all right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the one that I think is most likely to rank lowest: um, Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. Uh, of course, controversially on the main card, um, Bo Nickel five and zero as a pro, two and zero in the UFC. Um, Cody Brundage, a lot more experience in the UFC, coming off of that slam KO that got him this fight. Um, so, fair play to him for that. Uh, Bo Nickel, the biggest that. favorite in UFC history, as uh, we spoke about before hit and record, which is absolutely mental. Um, I, I. I don't think that this is Apex because as much as I'm not going to get carried away with Bo Nickel, I do tune in to watch him fight. I did watch him fight when he was on Jorge Masvidal's promotion. I watched him fight on Contender Series. Like The guy is a super prospect and uh, his fights are really entertaining. Um, you know. If this if this was a if this was a fight night card and it's on at three a.m., am I going to set an alarm to wake up for it? Uh, if that's the only fight on the card that I want to watch, probably not. I'll watch it in the morning. But uh, I don't think I think it would be harsh to call it, 
UFC Apex, and I think that it's definitely not near main event. Um, so it, I, I would put it fight night, and I'm expecting it to go to the right if there's other fights that go into this category, because I think it probably is the uh, the lowest quality fight on this card in terms of you know the actual quality of the people in there, but also the hype for this one. And I will be surprised if any of you disagree with me in terms of it should be higher. I will be very surprised. <clears throat> No, it. I might. Not. I might surprise you slightly here. That it's a pay per view fight because the UFC and Dana White have made it very clear sure. that Bo Nickel fights on pay per views. He is not a fight night fighter. So by that logic, yeah, if, it if, is a pay per view. If, fight. if we but were in charge, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it, it's it, it's a case where like you take fucking like Diego Lopez. He's like in his three fights, he's been on like two pay per views. Holly Holm, you know, she fights on a lot of pay per views. Who else is here? Jessica Andrade pretty much exclusively fights on pay-per-views with a couple of exceptions. You know, p- people like that. But we get to make the rules here. And I think I think Fight Night is fair. I think Apex is a little bit harsh because the Apex is slop. And to be fair to him, Bo Nickel is actually a pretty good fucking fighter. Cody Brunner's not a bad fighter either. He's not a, a bad fighter either. It's not a main event fight. Uh, if it was, I'd have to really consider my investment in this sport. So yeah, I think like <laughs> third, fourth fight on a on a fight night main card. I think it would be be decent. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I think it's, all, it's, it's only it's only so high on this card. Like you say, Dana White pushing Bo Nickel. Actually, looking at the fight and the quality of the fight, it, it is what it is, isn't it? But um, Bo Nickel's ginger, so he could do what the fuck he wants. I, I'm all on team team Bo Nickel. He should be UFC 300. To be honest, but I will submit. I will submit to Fight Night. I suppose you know logic prevails. If you remove the hype aspect, that's probably right to have him there. Yeah, yeah. Which you I, kind I, of have to do when we're doing this. When um when Dana did the whole oh the first fight of the night is gonna is gonna send people crazy, it's gonna blow their minds, and then this was one of the first fights that we had announced, like when they announced Yuri and Rakic and stuff. Like that. I thought this was going to be the opening fight of the night. And I was like, to be fair, tune in. Bo Nickel, one of the biggest prospects in MMA, is opening the card. I was like, yeah, that, I mean, considering he's fought on pay-per-views uh, and main cards before, that is a big deal. Um, but, you know, that did not end up being the case. Um, <laughs> but It's like, have they used him as a bear break, though, as well? I, I don't mean got, no disrespect some, to Bo Nickel, do you know what I mean? Quick, there's so many high-level fights on this card that I wouldn't be surprised if we end up getting decisions in a row. So, and, you know, you wouldn't expect this one to go to a decision either. So, I get it, you know. It makes sense, I think, to some degree. Um, we'll go back round to Corley. Uh, to pick a fight oh, to talk about. Oh, oh, um, oh, right. I am going to go with. I will go with Yusuf and Lopez. I actually really like that fight. Um, in general, I like both fighters. Um, heartbreaking moment for me was when Yusuf and Alan had to fight. That was that was very heartbreaking. But obviously, big up Arnold all day. Um, sorry for bringing that up. But yeah, uh, but, uh, I'd oh god, now I was very confident, and now I'm so confused and torn. I don't know if I want to pop him in the main event or not. You know, or maybe a fight night. Do you know what I mean? I really like Diego Lopez. But yeah, I'm very torn. I'm very torn. I think um, to open it up, uh, the the main event category was put in to be like, again, the distinction between main event and pay-per-view. Because usually when we say, oh, this is a good pay-per-view card, the majority of the fights on here could be a fight night headliner mm-hmm. or like the main card, at least. That's usually, you know, like the benchmark, right? And yeah. so the main event isn't, you know, some of the better fight night main events that we get, I would say. It's a fight night main event that you're not mad at, right? So yeah. I think in that, in that circumstance, the fact that people are so high on Diego Lopez, the fact that Sadiq Yusuf has been in fight night main events in the past, and that again, 
a fan favorite to some degree, always puts on good fights. I think that if that was announced as a fight night main event, people would be pretty excited for it. I would uh... make the argument. Yeah, no, I, I would I would advocate for that to be main event, and I would make a point, maybe just a little one, that that could be a pay-per-view feature. Because, again, we've seen Lopez on pay-per-view main cards. Uh, I don't know if we've seen Yusuf on a pay-per-view main card, but he's been on pay-per-view uh, in the past. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I think it'd be a cool fight to have on a pay-per-view, but I think if that was a main event, it'd actually be a main event I'm kind of excited for. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I was I was between those main event and fight night categories, but I mean, and and it comes down to me like, have we seen fight night main events worse than this? Yes, there's been a fuck ton, so um, <laughs> I'm perfectly fine with this being a main event. All right, we'll put it in. Uh, Steve, pick another fight. Mm. Um. I am. See, see, I was going to say a fight, and I'm, I'm not sure where to put it. So let's go for the one picture at the bottom that does not look like the rest. <laughs> let's go for Jalen Turner and Money Waikano. <laughs> I mean, it's a great fight. Um, it was, I think, it was like the last fight to be announced for this card, right? Probably hence why they don't have the proper graphic, but it's a great fight. For me, if we're going straight to the ranking, it's between pay-per-view and a main event. Moicano's a big enough name now that he can get pay-per-view fights. Jalen Turner's, he's had pay-per-view fights. He's a highly thought-of guy. Um, so, yeah, so that's, a, I think, probably lower end of pay-per-view or a main event that's maybe slightly... Um, I don't know. Um, it's a great fight on paper. Um, one I'm really excited for. Yeah, I, 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 would, I, I, yeah, I think that uh, you make a you make a good case for the profile of Hanata Moicano and the fact that Jalen Turner's had a few big fights. I I think for me, with the with even though that they both probably deserving of being on a pay per view card, if I'm yeah. the the pay per view category, if we look at like Holly and Kayla, if you had told me when UFC 300 got you know when they confirmed the date, if you had told me. And Atom Moicano and Jalen Turner are going to be on the main card of UFC 300, right? Of course. Okay, that's huge, right. A huge okay, pay per view. Right. Mm. I would be like, mm, that's a really good fight, but it don't know if it should be that high, right? Like that's, that's fair. So I, I think I think main event for sure. Uh, I think yeah. Anato Moicano definitely deserves to be in main events. Don't put him at the apex because he will kick off. Um, and Jalen Turner deserves it too. Jalen Turner's great fun to watch. So. And on Moicano, I'm really happy to see him kind of get the spotlight because for years he was this just underrated guy. He was almost a boogeyman in the division. The card behind me, with Garbrandt and Dillashaw, he beat Cub Swanson in California. Kind of, no one was like picking him except me. I knew how good he was, but um, yeah, that's one which, he, and he had several fights like that. It feels like so. Obviously, now he's kind of picked up his persona a little bit. And I'm really excited to see him get in these big fights that his talent has kind of deserved for a while. I'm going to make gonna make a point for pay-per-view here. Um, I feel like I'm going to do this a lot because I think a lot of the fights here could be on pay-per-view. I, I, I know you said if this fight got announced for the main card of 300, we'd, all, we'd be like, that's a good fight. Not sure it deserves to be there. But if that got announced for the main card of 299 or 298 or, God forbid, 297, how would you feel? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, three hundred one as well. <laughs> oh yeah, no, three hundred one. That, 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 that kind of desire. It could legitimately be the co-main event if they hadn't yeah. paid Jose Aldo a ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't. I, I guess. Look, I guess I'm maybe just, not to get all like uh, you know, technical with it. I guess there needs to be a distinction in what pay per view means because if you look at right, let, let me look up. Uh, uh, let's use UFC 301, I mean, I, for example. I thought if there UFC... was, and that's why I was kind of confused when you brought UFC 300 up when I was trying to put it in pay-per-view. Because, like, it, it, UFC because 300 has like, got its own category. Because I feel like if it's... Yeah, but 300 I I, is more like the status, right? Like, it feels deserving yeah. of that. 
that okay. spot where I just use 300 as an example of a good pay-per-view card, like a pay-per-view card, like an international fight week or an MSG card, something cool. that you're like, that isn't a regular pay-per-view. That's a big pay-per-view. And like, I feel like I it's can... tough because if you look at like 299 and stuff like that, let me pull up. What was like, what was the main card like for UFC 299, which was a solid, oh, it was very, really very good, good yeah. very, very good pay-per-view. Uh, Oh, yeah, that's a top one because you have Petty Yan and, and Sonya Dong as the main card opener, and mm. that's an absolute banger. But you know, like, is Petty Yan? Yeah, is that more of a like you could definitely that would easily be a fight night headliner? But it's probably you'd probably say it's too good to just be a fight night headliner. I would say, even though I want to, I would want to see that over five rounds. It's it's that it's it's a tough it's a tough line to draw. I think. There. <laughs> I think on most pay per views, that could absolutely be at least open in the main card. I think Moicano, yeah. especially with his character now, he's absolutely a pay per view guy. There's like no doubt about that to me. Jalen Turner's been on pay per views before. He's obviously a guy that's had a lot of potential. So, yeah, yeah, I would, I would go the lower end of pay per view, but I'm fine with it going to main event as well. Yeah. That works, I think. I, I would, I would, I would second that. Oh, put it in main event. I'm just gonna be a bastard. <laughs> I, I agree <laughs> with all of your points, though. But um, yeah, main event. I yeah. think, uh, I think, I think you guys made the made the argument well there for it being deserving of of that. I think that you know, again, maybe if you if you don't put three hundred hanging over it, and you said. UFC 301, UFC 302, whatever. That's the the main card opener. You'd be happy with that. So yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> it is in that it's in that kind of middle ground where I could see it also being like obviously in this case it's a pay per view prelim, and I could see that on other good pay per views, but I don't see it as a fight night main event really. Even though I think it could be more, it's more of a it's weird to say it's more of a pay per view fight. fight. Do you know what I mean? I think there are certain fighters that they they work well in a in a pay per view setting. You know what I mean? And even though like pay per view main cards are like generally construed as being better than than fight night main events a lot of the time, are they? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, like a, a lot of the, like you know a fight night main event is a pretty valuable spot. And as much as I think they both could headline, I I prefer seeing their names come up on on pay per view cards for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah, and to my point, even like it's a main it's a main card fight, but I I would I think they are more likely to be a prelim of a pay per view than a fight night main event. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say I like if you took like international fight week, which of course would be a huge card. If that was your main card opener, makes a lot of sense. If separate the two categories, if Sadiq Yusuf and Diego Lopez was on international fight week, I feel like that would be a really good final prelim. Would it be a main card? I wouldn't be mad at it being main card opener because I'm a big fan of both guys. But if I was going to say where it will go, that feels like more of a likely scenario. Whereas, yeah, I think the, the, the higher profile of the other two guys is the distinction there. Uh, Jake, uh, you are up to pick a fight. Ooh, I'm going to go with one that I've been avoiding picking because it's a difficult one to work out. But let's just go over with it. Bobby Green and Jim Miller. Um... See, here's here's my argument. I want to put it on 300 because Jim Miller. I don't, but if we don't do 300, I'm not doing anything other than a fight night. And that's a really weird jump to do, but I, I think it's right because I like pay-per-view prelim maybe, but I, I, I take pay-per-view to mean like pay-per-view main card. A fight night main event, I you know, I'd watch it. I think people will get excited about it, but Miller and, and Green at this point in their careers are, are not like main eventers, not against each other anyway. But I could see that being on a on a fight night. So I I don't mind either way. I, I'm gonna say three hundred just because it's 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 Jim Miller and it's 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 his whole thing. But I'm actually not sure. That's I'm, weird. Yeah, easy, I hadn't even thought about that, but it naturally Literally is one of one of those two categories and not the ones in between. <laughs> yeah, it's an easy fight night for me. I think if you replace Bobby Green with Paul Felder, then you could put it on three hundred. 
but Bobby Green, he's had he's had a bit of a rough go of it lately. So I think I think it's clearly a fight night at this point. I think fight night. Jim Miller's only on the card, so he can be one, two, and three hundred. Like that's the only reason. Um, I do like Jim Miller, but um, yeah, it's an easy the, fight night, I reckon. The problem with this love is Jim Miller. We have a split again, but we can't meet in the middle because those two don't make <laughs> it's any not, sense. It's not a main event for me. Jim Miller, Bobby Green is UFC three hundred because of the history of Jim Miller, of course, but. I think that Jim Miller was going to be on this card regardless. And if you look at the potential opponents that we could have got, just I, I would have been more excited for the Paul Felder fight. Um, but yeah, when you look I at the, there. when you look at the opponents that he's fought lately, I didn't expect the fight to be as good as Jim Miller and Bobby Green. So that's why for me it would go three hundred because I am actually excited to watch the fight as well as it being just Jim Miller on the card. You know. Yeah, I'm not. I would I'm not gonna. As much as I would put it on Friday night, I'm not gonna argue that too hardly yeah. or too hard. Yeah, I, I think that'll actually be one of the one of the more fun fights of of the night because even though like his opposition has has not been as as strong lately, like Miller is still quite exciting to watch, and so is Bobby Green. Um, and then you throw in you know the the the, the narrative around around Miller then as well. Uh. I'm all right. Uh, bottom of 300, I, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Like, can you? I know that the, the top tier is like, oh, it's deserving of this spot on this card. Can you imagine if they had just put Jim Miller versus Bobby Green for like 301 or 299? <laughs> You'd be like, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> um, all right, let me pick a fight. Um, do I wanna do I wanna just go I wanna just wanna go big? What did I pick last time? Bo nickel. Okay. Yeah, I'll go big. Um I'm gonna pick look, we've been we've been called Violet Money TV in the past has been called the uh that we have cornered the hipster MMA market, right? That is our that is our shtick. If you follow us on social media, that is what you're in for. And with that in mind, I'm going to do the most hipster MMA thing maybe possible on this card and say that, in my opinion, the best fight on this whole card is Charles Oliveira versus Armand Sorukian. <laughs> that is I don't think that. I, no, no, there's, there's far more hipster things he's, to do. He's, he's not even open up the debate. He's just putting us Oh, no, I just, I just put it there to make my point. We'll, we'll move it around. <laughs> if, I'm no, not gonna, I think... I'm not going to die on the hill. The most the most hipster thing you could do is say that Diego Lopez is is the best <laughs> is the be, is the best thing on three hundred. Shout out to shout out to all of the Bronx. I can't do that. Uh, shout out to to Andy Hickey, of course, who gave us the moniker of having a uh, having cornered the hipster market in uh, in MMA. But yeah, I think I think Oliveira versus Sarukian either has to be at the very top of pay per view or. Maybe second on three hundred, maybe maybe just a touch behind Gaethje and Holloway, because that that's a phenomenal fight. Yeah, I think I think if I'm if I'm being realistic and I'm not trying to make a, a big a big song and dance about it, I think that realistically it would go there. But um, I I I just I, you guys made a made a good argument for for Max Holloway. I just I just don't think Gaethje and Holloway. I'm not like, oh, I can't wait to see if Holloway can do it. I'm more just like, it would be cool to see them share the cage together. Um, because I'm, I'm a, I am a little bit worried for Max Holloway in that fight personally. Whereas Charles Oliveira, Armin Saruki, and I had to write my predictions for that fight yesterday. And I must have changed my mind about six times just writing one paragraph about it. Um, so that is why I'm so excited for that one. But uh, do you guys feel like that's a, that's a fair spot for it? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Hell yeah, Zay. All right. Uh, Coley pick a fight. Um, Calvin Cutter and Aljo, baby. Um, I don't really know where to go with this, to be honest. Aljo's just been doing loads of grappling, hasn't he, recently? Just loving the life, drinking Madri down in Wales with our man Oban, you know. He's just been loving life, hasn't he? Um, Cutter's... What's he on now? It's like a... He lost his last one to Arnold Wally, but it was like he's, he fucked his knee up, didn't he? So that's a bit unfortunate. But um, because of Aljo, I would 
say it's like a pay per view, it's like a main card opener that in it. I'd say maybe maybe a main event. I'm not really too fussy on it. Don't really think it's UFC 300 like wow factor, but um, just Aljo moving up and getting a tough fight in caters enough in it. I reckon for a pay per view slot. But I, I am, as you know, I'm a broken anchor. I can drop it to the sea floor and I can drift away. So put me where you want me, boys. Put you where you want me. I think that I think that, that seems pretty fair. Your explanation of it, to be honest. Yeah, I go middle of pay per view. Maybe maybe over Turner and Moicano just because of yeah. Sterling. Sterling has a Sterling has like you know a pretty historic resume at bantamweight. And Calvin Cater is you know fucking really fun. Uh, and if not there, I would say top of fight night because it, it's a good fight. I just I agree with Collie that it doesn't really have like the wow factor to put it any higher. Yeah, I agree. I think that if um, the I think the only thing that would potentially push it higher is that if you know Calvin Cater had maybe had a win recently or something like that, to where you're going, Aljo or Cater could get a title shot from this. That's like you know that is the difference. You know when we talk about Charles and Armin, that is a number one title contender matchup. I mean, what happens with Gaethje and Holloway? What happens with Pori Islam? You don't know, but. Either of those guys with a win will not need to fight again to get a title shot. If Aljamain Sterling or Calvin Cato win that fight, even in impressive fashion, they have to, which I think is why it would be a, a pay-per-view main card opener or, or something like that. Well, you know, not necessarily an opener, but on a on a pay-per-view main card, I think, at the very least. Mm, depending on, yeah. It's the stakes, I think, that separates that one a little bit. But it's still yeah, high stakes, of course. But um, Yeah. Steve, which fight are you going for? Hmm. I think we've left the main event long enough. I think let's bring up Pahaya and Jamal Hill. <laughs> and I am not putting this in the UFC 300 because Jamal Hill should not be on UFC 300. The guy is not a good fighter. He's not a good person. I... Jeez. Shots fired. Oh, yeah. Jeez. It's a, it's, a, it's a world title fight, so put him in pay-per-view. But um, I think, I mean, I'm open to discussions. But No, but, but when you... pay-per-view. If I tell you what, if it was Alex Pereira versus literally anyone else, yeah. I would put it in 300. Yeah, because Because exactly. Pereira, like, Pereira is like one of the biggest stars in the UFC globally right now, and it's so impressive that he's done that in, what, two and a half years? But Jamal Hill should not be here. He should not be here. He's he's. Uh, I think he's. I wouldn't say he's a bad fighter. He impressed me with that win over to Chera, but he's not fucking great okay. either. He's I'm not awesome. great either. You know, I and that's like that's the thing as well. Like it is, it is a personality thing as well. Like it's you're you would be hard pressed to find someone who enjoys Jamal Hill as a human. Like there are Jamal Hill fight fans, very few Jamal Hill person fans. Um, and that 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 does unfortunately factor into how we look at uh, how we look at him as a fighter. So I would go pay per view, obviously, because you know Pereira title fight, Jamal Hill been on pay per views, headline pay per views. Um, I mean, yeah, but no, no, no higher. I want to talk about. I want to compare this. I want to put this in context with UFC 100 and UFC 200. UFC 100, obviously, the main event. Brock Lesnar, Frank Mayer, whatever. Um, George St. Pierre was on that card. UFC 200. Amanda Nunes was in the main event. Anderson Silva was on that card. Daniel Cormier was on that card. Jamal Hill is now part of that class, and I don't like that. <laughs> UFC Apex. <laughs> I mean, Jamal, uh, gen 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 generally, Jamal no, Hill, no, not I, against Alex Bahia. I would. I, he's as a fight night. Yeah, I still think UFC Apex. I fully acknowledge what everyone said. I love Alex Pereira. Um, I don't even dislike Jamal Hill. To be fair, yeah, I, think not, he, I think he is. I'm I, not I, mad I, at Alex. I don't think he's a bad fighter at all. Um, I think he's he's all right. To be fair, but um, just UFC Apex it because it's a random headliner. If it was a co-main event, I'd actually say put it as a pay-per-view. But because it's the headliner, I have massive problems. So Apex it. Right. Six months ago, 
it's not a bad main event. Six months ago, if someone said, hey, what do you think the UFC 300 main event is going to be? How many fights would you say before you said that fight? It wouldn't. You wouldn't say it. Thousands? A lot, a lot of, and a lot of people would say stupid ones like fucking Brock Lesnar and GSP and Ronda Rousey before they got there. You know what I mean? It would. It would have, it would have said people, Alex people, versus Tom Aspinall before they got to this fight. People were honestly okay with having Bilal Muhammad fight for a world title in the main event before they were okay with Jamal Hill fighting for a world title in the main event. And that says something because people hate Bilal Muhammad. Yeah, it's either an apex or a pay per view. <laughs> I would I would go I would go top of pay per view because I mean it's it's, it's, a, it's a good player, fight. Right? It's a it's a it's, it's a good player, fight. Right? And if that was the main event for for three oh one, I think we would look on it more favorably. That's true. No, that's true, and that's why I'm not looking at it favorably because I don't think it should be the main event of this card. If it was the co-main of this card, I'd look at it more favorably. But it's not. It's the main. And like Steve said, I just can't ride with that, homie. You know what I mean? I just can't do that. I'm just. My mates aren't even very into it, and they said, "What? What is that as the headliner for?" And I'm just like, "It's a good card." And we're like, "Yeah, but it's a shit moon event." And it's like, "How, how would you argue with that? It is, and it's all right." It's not a bad fight. No, it's I, just because I it's think I think the actual fight is 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 quite good. I'm 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 excited mm. to see this fight. Um, but I I do agree that if it was Alex Pereira versus anybody else, you're probably looking at like in and around the top thing. However, 100%. I I I feel like it fits there. Yeah, pretty neatly, and that we can just drop it down a tier, not because of. Uh, one half of the main event, but potentially because of the other, because I I would be more excited uh, for somebody else. And the idea of UFC 300 closing with Jamal Hill walking out of the cage with Don't the belt around his waist Don't is say a it. scary, scary thing. I would just also, I would just like to give um, Hill a shout out as well. It seems like he's really trying on his social medias to, you know, rally the troops behind him. So, um, Give him some credit, but no. Look, I I don't I don't like Jamal Hill. I think he's quite obnoxious. <laughs> I think he's quite obnoxious, right? That's just where I stand on the matter. But I'll give him a little bit of credit in in this regard, in terms of this being a main event and whatever. Tate and Nunes ended up being the main event, and like the worst case scenario for the UFC happened. Mish Tate lost. But Amanda Nunes went on to become an all-time great, and that's looked back at as a defining moment in her career. And, you know, when people are comparing 200 to 300, they go, oh, well, Amanda Nunes was in the main event, 200. Yeah, and people despise that because she wasn't a name at the time. Wow, I feel... So... So it's shots at me here. I'm... I'm yeah, just... Just just a little. So I'm not, I'm not saying Jamal Hill is going to go on and have a fucking legendary title reign. But I'm saying we might look back on this in a couple of years and say, do you know what? I complained at the time, but that that wasn't a bad main event. That was that was a that was a, that was a good moment for MMA. I doubt it, but we might. With UC two hundred, bro, with Amanda Nunes and Misha Tate, it was a it was a strange strange time when that they were like, oh, this is the main event now. By the yeah. way, because interesting week, very interesting. Uh, week. And I will give at least whilst that fight. People weren't crazy excited for it. People don't seem crazy excited about this one either. At least with this one, first of all, I feel like a lot of the MMA fan base is like unified in support of Alex Pereira, which is, has been a, a an interesting time. And also, at least with this fight, I think you have the narrative of him beating Glover Teixeira. You know they're going to play the clip of Jamal Hill and Alex Pereira giving each other looks after that fight. Like at least, at the very least, there is a narrative. With this one, Jamal Hill's injury, of course. Like I think that the fight, the hype for it, similar levels. But at least I think you know there is a little bit of a an extra something here that makes it feel a little bit more deserving of a main event spot compared to what we ended up with at, at two hundred. Uh, obviously, different circumstances and stuff. But I mean, Alex Pereira, I like. I, I'm not surprised at all that this is what we ended up with. Like. I, I feel like it was pretty clear uh, a good a good few months before it got announced that we were going to end up with Alex Pereira versus somebody because uh, he's one of the biggest stars that they've got, and it just made sense. 
and uh, and Jamal Hill was the matchup for it. So there we have it, the main event. And we still have one more title fight to talk about as well, um, which I'm surprised they stayed in there for as long as they did. I can't even remember what order we're on with who picked that fight. Steve, did you pick that fight? Yes, because I went on a tirade against Jamal Hill. Well, I mean, look. <laughs> I with considering that the order goes you and Jake, I figured one of you was gonna pick <laughs> this time to uh, to talk about Jamal Hill. Uh Jake. We've got th- we've got three left. Everyone's gonna pick except me. Ah oh, true, yeah, you didn't want to miss out on your opportunity. You can have time. mine if you want, Steve. Don't worry about it, mate. You can have mine. It's only three first left, it's not exactly <laughs> All right, Jake, uh, your pick of the three. Mm. You know what? There's two that I'm looking at that are kind of difficult to place, and I would rather not make a pick. So I'm going to go with the, the easy one. I'm going to take uh, Zhang versus Zhonan, and I'm going to put that above home versus Harrison, but below Pereira versus Hill on pay-per-view because that's a, that's a pay-per-view fight. Simple as. Now, the rest of you can... Go argue about where the rest of them belong. Steve, do you think that that's a worse or better fight than Alex Pereira, Jamal Hill? Uh, that's the fight? debate. It's, that's it's the a, debate, it's a, I think. Is it? Um, he's obviously the star power of Pereira is a big factor, though. Oh yeah, I, I, when I say like, yeah, I suppose I shouldn't have said fight. Uh, like, uh, not in terms it's, it's of, you know... Bit, uh, uh, I don't know. Um, I love watching Wally Zhang, so I'm always going to watch Wally Zhang fights. But in terms of, like, the size of the fight, if they're on a pay-per-view together, which, I mean, they are, but um, if they're on a different pay-per-view together, Alex Pahaya is obviously going to be high on the card. So I, I yeah. think it, I think it's it's where Jake said it, just under that Pahaya fight before Holly and Kayla. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I, I'm still, I'm still more excited. I think for the Alex Pereira, Jamal Hill fight, even if the criticism with that not feeling like the UFC 300 main event, I'm still like, if that was announced just for 301 in Brazil, I'd be pretty excited for that fight. Yeah, it's just the 300 thing that puts. And the, the, and there was there was criticism when this fight got announced for 300 as well, for similar reasons. Obviously, this fight should be in China. If this fight was in China massive right but it's it's not it's not really a 300 fight at least what you would expect you in as much yeah. as i love willie john because i think she's an incredible fighter and john john yeah. and jan's great as well but um it's not a 300 fight no um do you think that's, oh, that's no, not, that's to... not necessarily a knock because it's just better elsewhere it's like dana was saying with um leon and aspen the other week it's just a better fight elsewhere yeah. I'm just gonna throw this out there. If if we are having our way here and we're putting these fights where we want, if you do this one in China, is it a fight night in China? Because if so, you kind of have to knock down the fight night main event. Hmm. Or do you do do you that, do a pay per view in China? I think it's yeah, that's deserving. interesting. I think oh, it's okay. des- it's deserving of a pay per view. But that fight is a bit of a tricky sell on pay-per-view in, in the US. That's the thing. Yeah. But I mean, it's a title fight. It's going to be a main event. So it was in China. So I would say pay-per-view. But I yeah. see the logic. It's fair. I see the logic. Mm. Uh, Oli, do you want to pick out of these last two? Oh, do I? Um, oh, I will spice it up. I will just go straight in with Prozaka and Rakic. And um, I'm really excited for it, to be fair. I think um, it's going to be a good one to watch. I reckon pay-per-view it. I reckon pay-per-view it. And I only reckon pay-per-view it because that's where we put Zhang and Yan. I'm more excited for Zhang and Yan, um, personally. So I just bang it in the pay per view. Are you more excited for Yiri and Rakic than Holly Holm and Kayla Harrison? I am. I'm also more excited for it than I am AP and Hill. To be honest, I would, 
I oh, would well, that, put that, that changes everything. <laughs> I honestly, I would, I would honestly have put like Yan, play, have and, Yan and Jang at three hundred, and I would have firmly had Yuri on that in that pay per view spot. But um, no, yeah, pay per view it, pay per view it, man. All right. <sighs> We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to come to a. <laughs> it's, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's definitely a pay per view fight. For me. I think it's one hundred. I mean, yeah, yeah, pay-per-view. yeah. I think if it was if it was Prohashka versus anyone else, I'd put it on three hundred. It's the fact that it's Rakic, and I can never get on board with Rakic. I can never, I can never get excited for his fights, and it it really annoyed me because when this fight got announced, I was like, "Wow, Prohashka's fighting on three hundred. That's awesome. Who's he fighting? No. Oh, it's Rakic." <laughs> Oh fuck! Like, there's a chance that he might make a Prohashka fight dull, and that terrifies me. So for that yeah. reason, I want to put it. Yeah, I, I'd put it in third. I'd put it maybe below the title fight. Um, again, if the, if this was Prohashka against anyone else, I I personally put it in uh, in three hundred. Yeah, Yuri's absolutely the kind of fighter that should be on this platform. There's no question about that to me. But um, like Jake, I'm not super thrilled by the fight either i mean if it was yuri and alex again right that's 300 all day yeah and then yeah i was i was thinking, I was thinking about that earlier I was, I was thinking like if if um if if hill pulled out for some reason this week and prohashka versus Pereira, the, the rematch oh, was the main yeah, event we, i not would to, not to like I, I, I would be incredibly excited not to like wish ill health on the man but we can only dream we could we could, <laughs> I should have just I should have just made a little Jamal Hill and Rakic and we could have put that one in to, to fight night mate. Bella Topo Slims. Bella Topo Slims. That's why we um, needed that category. Um, I my initial my initial thought was also there, although it did cross my mind for a minute, you know, if we're talking about we've put Cody Garbrandt and Figueredo into that top one, partly because it's a great fight and partly because it's the opener. The fact we're getting Yuri Prohashka on prelims. And I know that Rakic, you know, some of his fights haven't been entertaining. Uh, it's it's a huge fight for the division, Rakic coming back. And so I do wonder, whilst I don't, I'm not more excited to see it than the two title fights, is there an argument maybe that it's UFC 300 worthy just because we're getting two top contenders and Yuri Prashka on the prelims? No. <laughs> I really don't think so. I think I, I really think if it was if it was if it was Yuri and Ankalaev or Yuri and Walker, Yuri and fucking Krilov, Uzdemir, Azamat Mirzakhanov, Khalil Rountree, Dominic Reyes, Carlos Olberg, Alonzo Menafield. I think we're going to fucking Ihor Pateria. <laughs> Jake, do you not remember the last time Yuri Pashka, Yuri Pashka nearly killed Dominic Reyes? <laughs> 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 you want to see that <laughs> Yeah, I I'm not gonna lie, I for, I forgot that they fought, so maybe 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 let's not do that one. <laughs> you said but you said a long time in a discussion about UFC three hundred. That is wild. I would I put him there. Albert. He's a I think he's a Carlos Olberg. Carlos Olberg. I'd watch it. I'd watch it. Kenneth Kennedy and Zenjigu. Dustin Dustin Jacoby. uh, Tafon and Shukui. Devin Clark. UFC 300. Uh, See, now you're pushing. But those are the levels that I put them on. That's the level I put Rakic on in terms of excitement. I just cannot get on board with it. Good fighter. Good fighter. Like, world class. He He just doesn't do it for me. Anthony Smith. I forgot to mention him. Get Anthony Smith on 300. Let him fight Yuri Prohashka. He's fighting soon, right? He is. He's, he's fighting, fighting um, uh, Vitor Petrino. Oh, that's going to Oh, yeah. Vitor Petrino. That won't end well. Vitor Petrino would be fun. Yeah. What about the main... Uh, uh, y- yes and no. <laughs> Call him up. <laughs> Honestly, you put you you put you put Marty B on three hundred, and you you, I am sold. We have got one fight left to talk about. I think. Play the clip on um, Gladiator Diaries this week, Kyle. Where's the clip? 
Oh, I'll, I'll play. No. I'll play him the clip. I'll no, tell play, him. We've got, play this clip on Gladiator Diaries this week. We've got. We've got him a but... fight. But, um, we've been left with one fight. Uh, I am not surprised in the slightest that this fight is the one we have left because I just don't think. I think this one is there is the least to talk about. Um, I don't think it's the worst fight on this card. Um, I, I just I, there is not a lot to talk about. I think for me. Whilst they maybe, you know, because of the stakes potentially in this fight, it could maybe um, be higher in terms of like importance or significance. But if you're going to ask me um, which one am I more excited to watch or stay up for, I think it is a fight night main event and not a particularly exciting fight night main event. Even though, like I said, their places in the divisions, Sadiq Yusuf. And Lopez, you know, not that kind of uh, fighters yet in their divisions, but I would be really excited to watch that main event and expect it to be a very, very good fight. Um, and whilst I'm not expecting Andrade and Marina Rodriguez to put on a, a snooze fest, uh, I'm just, I'm just not that invested in this fight, and that that's why it's been left till last. I think. I mean, Jessica and Andrade is a yeah, really fair, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on pretty much everything you said there. Yeah, I don't even know like if it was if it was up to like again if it was a fight that main event that was announced, it's fine. It's a, it's a good fight. It's one of the better fights you put together in in that division. But um, also if that was a, a feature. People would on complain it. about that though as a fight that main event. Yeah, they would. I think it would be a little more well received if it was like. Fucking co-main or feature fight on a on a fight night somewhere, yeah, or you know something like that. But that's that's the only argument I'd make. But like if that was announced as main event, um, there has been worse. It's been a lot worse. Interestingly, Marina Rodriguez. Yeah. Interestingly, because of doing yes. this tier list where it has their nationalities, I'm I'm looking and realizing how many Brazilian fighters we have. Like mm -hmm. right around this portion with a Brazil card next month that could really do with some Brazilian fighters. Um, so, <laughs> so all they're, right, they're so actually they're they're so starved for elite Brazilian talent. They they got rid of Usada and they're they're fucking giving Jose Aldo like uh, fucking a million dollars to come out in retirement and fight. Oh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Jonathan Martinez. Jonathan Martinez. Like, yeah. Hmm? I mean, we we need to do this as well for UFC 300, just just for like just to see for 301. You want to do a tier list for 301? Yes, I do. With oh. with these same with these same categories. Yes, I just I just want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony maybe, Smith, maybe, maybe top not, tier. Maybe not, Everything maybe else, not, maybe <laughs> Oh, all right. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sure. I'm sure that'll be that'll be an interesting video for people yeah. to tune in. Let's go. Uh, how many of the fights on that card make it into the top two categories? We would find out. Um, but I think that will do it for our tier list um, of the fights of UFC 300. I just switched to only me there, so apologies. I didn't just kick everyone out. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, but there you go. That'll do it. Uh, any final thoughts on 300 before we get out of here? Oh, uh, I don't know if you guys want to mention the the live that you're potentially doing. Uh, we don't have um, anything confirmed yet. So. Nothing confirmed. No, um, no, no time, no guests, nothing confirmed, but it's potentially going to be a live. I know, Jake, you're in for the live, right? These lives are kind of our baby, I guess. I don't know. Um, Kyle Corley, live? No? My Saturday, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. In fact, no. Yeah. I don't know if I'm at United on Saturday. I, I will try. Pray. I will try and swing by if I get the time for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, pretty, pretty I'll busy. I'll send out some messages and see if we can get some guests on to talk about these fights and then... We'll see if we can schedule something. Jake's finally left me now, so I'm just going to talk about this by myself. But, um, yeah, that's fine. I'm I'm here vaguely. I just I just keep glitching out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. We've done these lives before, and hopefully, potentially another one coming this Saturday sometime. See if the big man Oban joins again. 
I don't know if I can take you know, that. You know, I, I may... I don't, I don't know if I can take I that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, did give Steve, he did give Steve a bit of a grueler last time, and uh, he, he caught a couple of strays in my... Uh, in my uh my my interview with uh, james sheehan at, at, at cage warriors so I'm, i might have to me uh, or I, I, I might have to i might have to face up to that did i catch oh. face with james sheehan or did oban i guess i, guess I think he, that he, just, he came up he came up in conversation and i had words about him <laughs> okay <laughs> See, I mean, I would want to talk to Oban about just, like, his... Like, he went to Raw after his fight. He was hanging out with CM Punk. Like, I would just talk to him about that. Well, Jake's gone. Um, yeah. All right. No problem, says Oban. We shouldn't have talked about Oban that much, because he is not there. <laughs> 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 Potentially Oban earlier, question mark? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, no. Uh, just just check out the uh, the social media a little bit closer to Saturday night, and, uh, and we will let you know. Um, but until then, uh, if you don't end up catching us for the live, we will probably catch you next week to chat about everything that happens at UFC 300 and enjoy the fights. <laughs>